Hello ladies, I'm so glad to be here. I'm neglecting folding all those clothes I took off the line uh, just for you. <laughs> but I, if I wait until I have done everything, I'll be too tired to talk and it'll be too dark. So today I am going to talk to you while you do something repetitive or tedious at home and maybe have something else to listen to while you work. So before you go, I want to show you my cup. This is not a teacup, but I thought you might like it. I got it at Home Goods, which is similar, which is the same as TJ Maxx, and it's a second store like the Reject store, and uh, it's called English Ro Rose by Roy Kirkham, and I just love the artwork on it. As a matter of fact, over time I had gone back and found others, and then I bought a tray at at um, the Dollar Tree, uh, Dollar Tree, the Dollar Store. It's just a a little plastic tray to to set it on and I keep this in my kitchen and of course I turn everything upside down because we're on farmland and we want to be careful that something might not get in these cups uh, and my family when the descendants come they head straight for these cups they love these cups and the, the boys especially and uh, they're not tea cups and they don't have the the cumbersome saucer with them, but I thought you might enjoy seeing it. You might uh, head down to Home Goods or TJ Maxx and see what you can find by Roy Kirkham. I'll, send, I'll include a picture of this for you. And um, so these are kept out on the cabinet top so people can see where they are and help themselves without opening a door. And so today uh, I'd like to cover a couple of things. Number one is your appearance, which is really just your preparation. If you don't want to hear it anymore, let's just talk about preparation. If you reach a snag or there's a lot of uh, feeling of irritation or maybe there's some, uh, some discontent going on in your home, have a look at how prepared you are. Did you get dressed? Did you, did you uh, take care of yourself? Um, did you take care of your spiritual life? Did you have your prayers? Did you read your Bible? Did you make your list? Sometimes, you know, it's, it's kind of like washing dishes. I have seen strange things done with with washing dishes. I have a dishwasher, but I've watched people uh, wash dishes without any preparation. They just uh, throw a bunch of stuff in the sink, add water and soap, and start washing, and there's chaos all around. Whereas we were taught when we were younger in the olden days, uh, and even on the primitive homestead, in the log home that I lived in, my mother was quite strict about this. Uh, you had to clean the area around it first. Clean off the table, wipe it down really good with a clean cloth, get rid of all the crumbs, and, st and rinse all the dishes and stack them in the order in which you are going to wash them. We always wash the glassware first and, and then the, um, the cutlery, silverware, you know. Anything that touches the mouth, that went in the water first. We uh, always uh, use the... Uh, we washed the... Um, pots and pans, the dirtiest dishes last. But everything around it had to be clean. You had to have your little dish rack, dish drainer there, your towels ready, your rinse water, and then you cleaned off the cabinets and everything surrounding it. And you know, it gave you a feeling of having the job half done. You go back to look at the table, it was clean, the centerpiece was reassembled. And uh, I have seen people that just, I, I don't know how they keep from being discouraged the way they do things. Um, and even when I'm sweeping, I want to tidy the area around the areas that I have been sweeping. But if you're having trouble getting started or if you feel a bit uh, disgruntled, there are a couple of ways that you can uh, remedy that. And one is to get ready and, you know, just do five minutes of stretches, exercises, uh, because it, it takes away the tension you might be feeling in your upper back or lower back and your shoulders and... Also, you're, uh, you know, think about all the people you could pray for. That takes away a lot of tension, a lot of stress. And the other thing that I have discovered, and everybody's different, is uh, in troubled times where you don't have any uh, control over it. I mean, we didn't vote for this, did we? <laughs> and, uh, but you know something? They didn't ask our opinion, and uh, we're the power around here, not them. I was just posting a comment to someone that... Uh, employers have an attitude that uh, they can do whatever they want with their slave employees if they require them to uh, harm themselves, if they require them to wear 
uh, something that's uh, degrading to them or, you know, if they want to be employed, that's what they have to do, you know. They have to show up and work in something strange on their head or or whatever. Who knows what it's going to be. They'll humiliate them because they know they're desperate to work and especially people that know that they have a God-given responsibility to work to provide for their families. Well, that's not exactly what the Bible teaches. It doesn't say that you have to work in uh, at the expense of violating your uh, dedication to God or, or God's principles. And you can figure some of that out yourself. So today, I'd like you to get dressed if, if you haven't done that. And those of you that always do that, you can just fast forward through this while I talk to you about it. And that is, do more than throw something on. Make the day special by what you wear. And a lot of us have <clears throat> things hanging in our closets that are reserved for <clears throat> for best and the best just doesn't ever seem to get here and you know what happens if you can't go to all those things that those clothes are for um, it's fun to get them out and wear them and there'll be more where that came from if you wear it out I've always been told that anyway so um, also the other thing is to practice little drops I call it little drops of thankfulness uh, we are having a, a drought, and we have a drought season every year here in Oregon, and uh, as dry as can be, and, and everything looks like a brown, a light brown dog <laughs> on the ground. And um, so I was won wondering how I could be thankful, and I went outside just a minute. I forgot to bring my prop. <laughs> uh, I went outside, and I got to looking around, and oh, I got kind of excited because... Queen Anne's Lace was out all over the place. This is not one of those uh, noxious poisonous weeds. This is called Queen Anne's Lace. It's a wild carrot and it grows in poor soil. It grows when there's a we're going through our desert season and I uh, found fabric one time that looked like uh, a print on Queen Anne's Lace and so I'm just so grateful to have this. I picked a bit of it and brought it in and uh, I was excited because you know when nothing's in bloom this Queen Anne's lace starts to mean something and uh, normally it's lush and plush around here and, and uh, vibrant green but when we go through our desert period every year usually uh, July or August and uh, so all there is is this wonderful Queen Anne's lace that comes up and I have seen it actually in now you don't uh, you probably can't imagine this, but the professional florists are now putting this in the bouquets. I've seen it before in the fresh bouquets. They was, uh, used to, they used a lot of baby's breath, which is really nice, or gypsum, and this is now appearing in some of the bouquets. I think that's interesting. And uh, so I'm going to show you a couple of things before you go. And um, for my daughter's birthday, I gave her something called a die cut. It's a little metal shape that you put in one of those Cricut machines and it cuts out uh, whatever the picture is on there. They're, they're little metal pieces and so this was what uh, I gave her and she made this uh, a envelope full of these paper bird cages because that was the shape that I, I gifted her with and it had, uh, it had the bird had the bird and uh, several it has a chain that goes with it's amazing what they can do with these we've gone from uh, in the 1980s early 1980s rubber stamps to scrapbooking and now it's the die cuts and um, I don't know if you can see that yeah now you can see it and then there's the bird and uh, so you, you glue these on uh, to cards and make cards for people they're just so beautiful and I even uh, got a card one day from a lady who who really enjoys this craft and she had a picket fence cut out and there's the flowers that go with it the little the little branch I just thought that was absolutely delightful so when I looked at it I felt so delighted and grateful for this new art that's coming out that I was thankful to God in uh, little small drops of thankfulness and I wanted to tell you about that how that helps because if you are discouraged and you are thinking about what the rest, what the world is up to and what they're doing, you know, you're just thinking about their subject. They want you to do that. They're delighted that we're all upset and that we're going to be thinking about what they're going, what they're doing uh, to us. And are they ever going to let us free? And 
this is the problem is that uh, you've got to substitute, you know, even before all this, those of us who have lived longer know we, we don't have the same level of fear as some of you do or, or discouragement because we've seen them do this stuff over the years. And uh, I was there when they were, uh, they had the fake gasoline uh, shortage, you know, and everybody was getting up at five in the morning and s sitting in long lines in their cars in Seattle, Washington, uh, waiting to get a little bit of, a little drop of gas in their in their car and uh, we've seen them do all this and then we would see other changes that this was uh, covering up and uh, so we know uh, that there is a future and a hope for us but it was hard to keep our mind on raising our children and and having a normal life for everybody at home if this news was constantly coming in and one thing that I finally learned to do was to substitute a thought when, when one of these fearful thoughts came in and what they are doing, the powers that be would come in, then I'd quickly substitute a little drop of thankfulness for some little thing. And uh, pretty soon it became a habit, you know, after a certain amount of time. It's the same with anxiety. If you get fearfulness because you think something's going to happen to you or some, and it could be, there may be a threat in your, in your family that uh, someone is going to uh, cause a big uh, uproar in your home uh, and change things the way they are and it can it can um, wear on you then you have got to learn to substitute that cheerful thought for the uh, for the impending doom thought and I've given you several scriptures you can use if you'd like to write out one of them and maybe post it on your refrigerator or Use some of your fancy lettering and write uh, Philippians 4.8. Think on these things, whatever's true, lovely, good, uh, full of nobility and virtuous. Th uh, think on these things and uh, memorize that scripture. I also gave you the um, Galatians 5.22 and 23 scripture, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace. And then I believe that the other one was First Peter chapter 1 verses 5 through 8 add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control use that as a course now some of you were asking me about a course how would you make a course well you would take a scripture like that add to your faith virtue and to your virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and you would make a you know get one of these uh, composition books and start looking up all those words faith virtue um, knowledge, self-control, and then start analyzing the scripture. Why, for example, is knowledge after virtue? Why didn't they say add to your faith knowledge? Knowledge is a big deal, isn't it? I mean, people are admired because they're smart, not because they're so um, obedient to God or good or being good homemakers. They're not admired for that. But why do you think that uh, knowledge came after faith and virtue? And so, you know, just make yourself a course. That is, you, you write the meanings of all the words in that verse and uh, make yourself a worksheet and a page where you've figured out some things. And then you write a little, uh, after you've figured out all the etymology of the words, then you go and write a little paragraph about it. Remember that paragraph I read to you from, um, I believe it was the... Grammar and Composition book from A. Becca, and it was, uh, we should always be cheerful, um, and uh, you can't make anything better by by being despondent, and uh, I'll, I'll see if I can find that and read that to you this time, but you know, use that of these verses and make yourself a little worksheet. That's what a course is, it's just a worksheet. However, I will show you how you can make a course for yourself in other things too. Um, so little drops of thankfulness. Okay, so now I want to move on um, to the home and how that relieves stress too. If you're working on it, it's easy to get discouraged, isn't it? And you can be discouraged if you're tired or if your um, your nutrition is not up. You know, you need to stop and make sure you have something to uh, eat and drink. And um, someone suggested the other day you put a little salt in your your juice or your water when you drink. It's just not enough to taste, but just a little bit. Um, to balance yourself and I did try that that's very helpful and but good salt I use good salt either sea salt or Himalayan salt or real salt I think it's called real salt the brand it looks like sand <laughs> but um, 
you can do a lot of things to alleviate the stress at home um, by uh, the minute it comes get up and go do something that's going to benefit you you're going to be glad you did it tomorrow you know we went through uh, my daughter and I went through all of the old um, magazines I had saved from Victoria to see which ones were missing uh, while she was here and you know that was such a useful good thing to do that she went through all of those and then put them in the shelf and that's going to benefit me and her later when she's going to want to look for something in one of those we use those as reference books now and so instead of wasting the time you, you think of all the time let's say a news story comes on I remember back in the 80s there was a big news story that went on for several weeks and some big thing um, I don't even want to mention what it was because I found out a lot of it was staged to achieve a certain political action so I spent all that time churned up in my stomach worried about everything not not able to concentrate or focus fully on anything and uh, I felt bad because those moments with the with the family and with the children in the home can never be recalled and it was wasted on uh, someone else and they want you to be distracted from who you are and what you're supposed to be doing they don't want you to live the Christian life and accomplish anything and um, develop character no that's another thing you could you could develop a course in character just by defining it all giving yourself some questions and answers and then writing a term paper on it um, so but term papers in my opinion and having been a, a veteran homeschooler I will tell you what I think it's term papers are tedious hard and sometimes meaningless to the people who are writing them and then of course the teacher has to read them what I found more valuable is after they had read something from uh, one of their homeschool courses or books come to me while I'm in the kitchen doing something and tell me what you read just uh, summarize it and tell me what it was and tell me what you thought about it that is a whole lot better than a term paper and so that's something you can do if you're developing a course for yourself is out loud summarize what it is that the course was about and what you're doing and so uh, I just want to show you some things that I used okay so I have old books and magazines that I bought because they had interesting things that I thought I might like to do and of course time went by and I didn't get to do them and I would look at them years later and say I really feel embarrassed because I, I got these and I didn't do them, didn't do anything in them. But then it occurred to me that I could make a course out of some of these. You see I put uh, these bookmarks in them. And this one is a magazine that I got many years ago and it had something interesting in it. So what I do, this would be my course. It's got all, it's with all these green tags in it, that's my course. And uh, some of it like... Uh, like this grammar and composition that would require writing on a page in in the composition book maybe but uh, these others are just things you do and what I do with those I'll show you is I'll make myself a little uh, schedule with the date Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and the chapters that I would cover or the pages and then I check them off to see if you know so I could keep track of what I'm doing and make a course and so I get up in the morning and I've got my list of all the housework that needs to be done and then I'll say um, do one course and so this one was a book uh, from the fabric store they used to give you uh, huge discounts on these and sometimes you could you could use your coupon on them and you get 50% off or more this was called Somerset artistic ideas to beautify your home well they let you go through them and I found this and wanted I, for years I've been wanting to do this so I put the bookmark in and I said you know I'm just gonna do this it's it's how to take remember the old umbrellas and they for, were forever breaking and we were stuck with the uh, frame of the umbrella and the rest of it had gotten blown off or torn off this is what they were doing is they were taking the the a bare frame and covering it with fabric to make a sun umbrella that was fancy well I had kept this for years and wanted to do it so this time this time through I marked it and it's part of my course and it's going to be on my on my uh, schedule here so that I can go ahead and do it and here's other pictures of it here and this is from uh, it's volume 6 2011 so that's quite a few years that's quite a few years ago but you know life happens and you don't always get time to do these things that you think you're going to do and I don't see uh, what I, I assume it's summer and so 
I'm I'm very happy to have this and I've always wanted to know how to do it anyway however and here's how to do it with you know old uh, fabrics and old linens old uh, lace and things like that I, and even even if I don't do it I might write down read about it at least I could read about it you know and that would fill my mind and heart with something good and lovely. You don't have to do everything. A lot of women I know collect uh, cookbooks and they like them to be beautiful. They like to have beautiful covers. They want beautiful artwork inside. They want beautiful illustrations. But they don't. doesn't mean they cook all that stuff. They like to sit back. I have a friend that just likes to take a break every day and get out one of the, the newest cookbooks she has and just sit back in her chair and read it. And so that's, and that's okay. That's good for you. You don't have to do all this stuff. You just, uh, I'm just might just read about this first before I decide whether or not I want to do it and what, you know, what I can do or whether I would it would be good for me to do that. Okay, so then, and this is my stack for this week. Then I have a, a marker in this one. I don't know if you remember these, but uh, when the first Anne of Green Gables uh, movie came in the you know in the color in the modern times it was 1995 i believe or thereabouts a lot of uh there was a company that did anne of green gables uh merchandise and they had a doll they had a picnic basket they had uh books like this this is called the anne of green gables treasury now whatever you may think of that story or the author or anything this is lovely and i wanted to show you uh one of the things that i liked about it was it had such beautiful artwork and there she is looking at, at Green Gables. I always thought it'd be nice to buy two of these because now you can get them on the web and they're not. At the time when I, wa when I wanted a new one these were extremely expensive. I'm trying to think what the price was. Um, probably over $30 where I just I went to thrift books and got them for a, got this for a few dollars and I think it's still new. And I always thought it'd be nice to get um, a second copy of this, take these pages out and decoupage them onto canvas and just decorate the halls of my house or something because they are absolutely beautiful. But, you know, you could take pictures of your own children uh, doing things like this and uh, there's a picture of the screen door and the front hall and you could take, you could do your own story and your own book. Um, you don't have to be dependent on things like this. You can do your own. And the, and I like the picture on the front where she's going down. What's that lane called? She called it a lane when they were going down towards uh, Green Gables. And I thought it might be nice to, to have a second copy of it. But in the back, uh, it gives a history of, of this and kind of summarizes the stories. And so then they tell you how to plan an Anne tea party. Well, this is what Miss Lily of the Valley has been doing lately with her descendants is that Allison on the Oregon Trail uh, is going to have a book like this too. She's just going to hand write it, but uh, can plan an Allison tea party on the trail. And um, this is a picture of her with the tea party with uh, Diana and her other friends. And it has a, it says planning an Anne tea party. So uh, I'm brewing a perfect pot of tea and the first course being sandwiches and you know you can do all this yourself. You could, if you're homeschooling yourself or your children or your grandchildren, you could actually write something like this in one of these books and do your own um, artwork and everything even if it's a little primitive and uh, create a story out of your own life. Uh, we don't have to be dependent on things like that. What if they take it all away from us? We still have our own life, and we can still create our own history, our own story. And this is, uh, there's just more recipes in it. And then also, in the back of it, they have uh, the scones and butter and jam and fruitcake. And then they have... They have how to have it's called busy hands and there's a picture of Anne doing some sewing there but wouldn't that be pretty in a girl's room now wouldn't it be nice I used to really be um, critical of the posters that young people have that they're uh, that are available that were available at Walmart and all these big box stores and these kids would buy these big posters of uh, heroes that never did anything 
to have instead. But the reason is that they'd get them is there's no there was no alternative. There should be pictures like this on posters and they should be put promoting those in the stores. So you can see what they're up to is they're changing the culture through that kind of thing, through the art and through the, the merchandise that they sell in these stores. But wouldn't it be nice to have things like that in your girl's room? Uh, because they'll imitate what they see in a picture and on a poster. As a matter of fact, you remember yesterday when I was talking in my video about the art literature readers? Well, in the back were was teacher's instructions. And one of them was to point to one of the paintings in the book and say, um, see if you can imitate the painting uh, that's there. And it was a boy who was sitting down um, making something out of um, tree branches or something and see if you can imitate this and imitate the picture. And so, yes, people tend to imitate what they see on the walls and it does influence them. So then it's how to make pillows, how to make uh, sachets, how to make a, a bib apron. It's how to make an apron. There you go. It's very similar to the Little House on the Prairie activity book that I had shown you before. How to make a baby bonnet. How to press flowers. You know, I um, was talking to you about the American Girl's Handy Book. On, it had a flower pressing, but this was how to make a flower picture. Now, with a book like this, if it's in my course, I'm either going to mark the page, like this one says Tea Cozy, how to make a tea cozy. Well, maybe I want to make one of those. You know, I noticed, um, I noticed I got for my birthday, my daughter and granddaughter gave me a gift certificate to Shabby Fabrics online. And they have a line of Green Gables and of Green Gables fabrics. So I thought it might be interesting. Uh, I haven't really looked at them very carefully. If they're pretty and if I like them, I might use the gift certificate for that. But um, it's lovely, you see. And you can get a lot of ideas from things like this. You could just do your own, you know. I'm saying just do your own because it will have more meaning for you. And, uh, for instance, they have all the people in the story and who's related to who there. You just do your own genealogy, your own family tree, because it says Anne's family tree. You can do your own. You can make your own stuff. And then they have a map of Prince Edward Island. Well, you could draw where you live. And they also had a picture, a drawing of the inside of the house. Have you ever thought of doing that? There's the, I did that in uh, Just Breathing the Air. I just drew the inside of the house and what where the bedrooms were, just what I could remember. People used to do that a lot. Um, so you can do any of this, um, but these are just good ideas. And So that will be on my course. There will be one thing in here I'll do, or else I'll just use the whole book for the course and just say I'm reading Chapter 1 today, one or Chapter 1, or Chapter 1 to 5 today. And I'll put that in my course, and it'll go alongside of my housekeeping list. And so then here's an old book I've had for a long time, and it was one of those book clubs where you could order three books maybe and get one free, or order one and get two free, something like that. And so I had, I had marked the fabric coordinates and uh, a curtain that I've always wanted to make. I'll probably do that in a different color, but something like that I would mark. Or maybe I'd want to use it as a total course and just do one. Uh, find There's different um, styles in here, and I'd want to do one and just go all the way through the book. Wouldn't that be nice to be able to go through some book that you like? Now, with a magazine, like the one I showed you, it's not all um, things that you would want to do, but I'll pick one thing out of it. And here I noticed... If I can find it again, there was an actual rug here you could make, which I'm really interested in making my own now. Um, so, if I can never find it again. And there it is. I believe it's probably felted. I, and, and I might just write down that I want to read about it. Read about the rug from uh, Somerset Home Magazine page such and such. Okay? And then... Last of all, this would be a little different. You would use this uh, maybe in your notebook and not check it off as having read it, but um, maybe you want to actually study it and uh, make copies of the questions or do the work because it, it's, it's actual worksheets in here. Okay, I want to read this because this is something I wanted to do. It's called commas, and it's from 
Grammar and Composition Number One from A. Becca. These books are getting harder to get. They say they can't keep up with the demand of the of the new homeschoolers ordering this stuff. But I ran across comma rules, uh, comma rules, and I thought, oh goodness, I know how to write and I can make a comma. But it was really interesting to read these because then you see, then you see, ladies, why homeschooling is so essential for you and for your children and for your grandchildren because of what they are leaving out or putting in in the public school. Now, those of you like me, I grew up in a public school, and I see now from these books where I got left out and what was left out and what what they did, you know. You don't really know what they've done to your mind until you see something excellent like this and you think, whoa, I would have had such uh, a less of a struggle in life uh, if I had known about these because they give you joy and they give you hope. And here are some of the sentences that you are asked to use a comma in, okay? Listen to these sentences. Now, would they ever use this except in a Christian school or a um, home school? He had many difficulties to overcome, yet he did not give up. See, that's, that's not only worth finding a place to put the comma, but it also has a, a meaning. It also has thoughtfulness in it. You can actually discuss the principle in the sentence. Okay, The Lord is far from the wicked, but he heareth the prayer of the righteous. So you have to find out where you put the comma and discuss the principle at the same time. Isn't that wonderful? We played and sang for almost an hour. That's something that's sweet and innocent and lovely. Uh, I'm sure uh, if you were um, jaded and you'd been in um, this system for a long, long time, you might kind of mock some of those things. But um, Okay, so here is another word, uh, another sentence that needs a comma. You know, you might want to just take some of these homeschool books and say, I'm going to do lesson unit two lesson one and put that on your list because the uh, the worksheet's all written out for you here the lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer um, <clears throat> cuba is held captive by harsh martial law now this was written in the 1990s so you could still use it because some of that's still 1992. See, they drop these inside of here. They drop these little things that uh, make the student think uh, instead of mindlessly adding a comma. They see, Christian education has meaning uh, and it's educating the heart. So important. Um, Holland. Belgium and Luxembourg are often called the low countries. Did you know that? Did you know that we have the the low country, I believe, is it South Carolina that has the, the low country? Um, we have things like that here. Um, before leaving, your mother wants us to pray with her. So where do you put the comma? And you're you're thinking about this while you're putting the comma in. He is a very wealthy man. But wealth cannot buy happiness. Paul, Barnabas, and Mark traveled to Asia Minor. So where is that going to send you? You're going to be getting a map out. You're not only going to find a place for the comma, but you're going to be getting a map out, and they're going to learn something. And you're also going to go to the Bible. A dead fish can float downstream, but it takes a live one to swim upstream. Okay, ladies, let's just use that as me homeschooling you today. You're just going to have to swim upstream because we are up against a big tide of, um, of things that are trying to uh, keep us from thriving. So this is what my Thrive classes are all about with my descendants. We get together or we get on Zoom in the winter. In the summer, we get together and um, everybody gets to teach something And uh, because we are swimming upstream. We are overcomers. In fact, the Bible says we're more than overcomers. What would what would it be like to be more, to overcome more than just overcoming? Hmm. Think about that, okay? So, um, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Where are you going to put the comma there? Roses and daffodils and tulips are beautiful flowers. 
There is true dignity in labor, and there is no true dignity without it. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. We swept the floor and mopped it and coated it with wax. The diamond cannot be polished without friction, nor can the man be perfected without trials. Government cannot make good men, but good men can make good government. A scorner seeks wisdom and finds it not. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, I want to, so this would be part of my course, and I said I'm going to do Unit 2, pages 13 and 14. But not only am I just going to put the commas in there, I'm going to write a little bit about each one and what I think of one. And when I read, um, the diamond cannot be polished without friction, nor can the man be perfected without trials. I wanted to tell you we had uh, our ladies' class this morning. We're calling it now the ladies' fellowship rather than a class. I, th I think people, um, you know, especially my generation, we were so burned out of uh, school, uh, public school, that we didn't desire having a class at anything uh, when school was over for us. So I'm calling it a ladies' fellowship because it's more than a class. We have tea and we have great discussions. And so we were studying Hebrews, which we're talking about, um, endurance and it said do not grow weary it says consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted and it talks about um, endurance and it said endure with joy now isn't that interesting so I looked up the word endure and it just meant to stay with something and I and uh, also it meant it said you would get strong with it and it was Hebrews chapter 12, and we only read a little bit of that chapter because it, it brought some interesting uh, conversation. It says, Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of God. Now, if you look at this, it talks about the race and how many times, especially in the New Testament, where... The Christian life was considered like a race. Uh, like a, uh, but when you look at the athletes, and of course it, it appealed to people of that time because they were familiar with uh, the uh, ath athletics at the time and racing. The race, the race was uh, well known. And an athlete, if you'll go, if you'll watch uh, some of these um, oh, Olympics, you will see the athlete has to keep his eye on uh, the, the goal down there. He doesn't, if he turns around and looks at the audience to see what they think of it, or uh, looks around at the people that he's competing with or running with, um, then he's going to stumble or he's going to uh, miss the goal or keep his eye off the goal. And so it said, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus. So that would be like the finish line there, uh, the founder and perfecter of our faith. But it said, let, let us run with endurance. Now, I learned something about that in my, in my um, exercise course that I'm taking online. I'm just following some videos that I like. And she said something about, uh, well, she had a weight that we had to pick up. I, I have a can of beans that I use, you know. And she uh, was using this weight. And she said, when it starts to burn, that's when you're improving. And that's when you're getting stronger. And that's when it's using up fat and developing muscle that's when you're losing weight well I didn't know that you know so if it started to uh, ache a little bit well I just stop you know it's uncomfortable well that's what this was all about it's uncomfortable isn't it uh, the race that we're running is uncomfortable and um, and it said let us run with endurance the race that is set before us and uh, it used the word endure several times Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. Um, so it said, uh, so we just discussed a, f a few of these verses about endurance. And I did look it up, promptly forgot what it means. Uh, it means to stick with hardship. And, uh, you know... Is said that this one verse, this one sentence I read, it said, uh, Weeping ain't may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Yes, the things that we endure make life better for us tomorrow. 
and uh, we'll be awfully glad we did. And so stand up for what uh, God has said that you must do and don't compromise your values just for, uh, you know, you know about the, uh, the homemaker. The home has to be careful with this because um, remember um, Jacob and Esau and Esau sold his birthright because he smelled this wonderful uh, stew that was cooking and, and he, he would have given up his birthright for it. And sometimes we're guilty of saying, well, let's take the easy way out uh, because it makes us more comfortable. And so we neglect our, our home and our true uh, reason for living, or we send our kids out to work and they don't like it, but uh, uh, we say, oh yeah, you know, we've got to earn a living. But we never have to do things like that at the expense of losing our souls or doing things that people tell us to that we know um, violates our soul or our body. So think about that for a little bit too. Um, and endure. Sometimes you're going to have to endure some rejection or you won't maybe not be able to do all the things the world does. I was listening to um, somebody on Rumble the other day and she had such a good message. She said uh, that, and I have said it before too, all of our stress these days is from out there. It's in the commercial world. We're worried about that. We're trying to deal with that. It's not convenient for us. It's not comfortable for us. It's not working for us. But yet we keep, we keep using them. I would say you can do your own. You can do, like I said, you don't have to, what if they shut down all the publishing? What if they shut down all the ordering? You're going to have to be a DIYer. You're going to have to write your own books. And uh, I don't know if you remember, uh, somebody was in a, I don't know where it was. It was maybe it was on a movie, and uh, they wanted to watch a uh, a car race, a, a car thing, and uh, it wouldn't come in or it was turned off or it wasn't working. And so he just sat there and pretended <laughs> that one car was winning. And uh, well, we used to do stuff like that when we were kids. You know, your mind is uh, such a wonderful resource. So what if they took all these books away from me? What if they took all my paper away from me? Um, then I would uh, be a storyteller or I would uh, be an encourager in some way, and you can too. Or um, what if they took away all my, um, all my cleaning ingredients? Well, I'd figure out a way to clean anyway. And um, so, you know, you can do, we can actually run circles around these people. They are lost without us. And that's why they're so desperate. If their philosophy of life was really true, we'd be all clamoring to get it. But because they know we are resisting it, they're pushing it on us. And so don't stop enjoying life uh, just because you're waiting for the world to straighten out, We're waiting for the economy to do better and everything. Well, you have your own private economy, and it, it's uh, you have control over it. And uh, one of the best ways to control it is not buy their stuff. Um, so uh, don't stop. And I'm just reminded when I'm talking to you about not stopping your life at home, making, making home life beautiful, is to think about what were some of the nicer places, what were some of the nicer places where you stayed in your lifetime? And Emma, figure out what the little details of it that you miss that you want to when you want to go on a vacation, that you really want to go, but uh, can't and imitate it in your home and just reproduce it in your home. I've often told people, you know, if you wouldn't spend so much time and money on these expensive uh, holidays or vacations, you could afford some of the luxuries that you experience. Uh, for example, I'm going to be going out to date or I'm going to order some nice plush new towels. It's about time uh, for my bathroom. And uh, so that when uh, the people that come to see me or myself, uh, I don't have to go out. I can experience the luxury here. And I've often told people, why don't you do more of that? You know, get yourself some a nice tea set and, and some nice plush towels and a, a, a new bedspread or something and make life at home beautiful. Uh, because what they have out there is just going to uh, suck you dry, use up your money and your time, and you can put more time into your home. Um, so just think about that, places that you've stayed that you've liked to imitate. Now, when I say don't stop enjoying your life uh, while you wait for uh, society to straighten up and don't stop, you know, one of the things uh, I told you about people who, um, 
people who uh, don't have a sense of humor and uh, how dangerous that is because uh, humor is so important. Um, even Elijah, the prophet Elijah had some humor, you know. Um, he said, maybe your God is sleeping. <laughs> he mocked the people that had other gods besides God. And so I was reminded of uh, Hyacinth in Wives and Daughters. Uh, and I'm speaking of, I have the book, but also the uh, series, movie series in Wives and Daughters. And Cynthia, her daughter, was engaged to Roger but she wasn't real committed to this to the relationship and he was away in Africa on a scientific mission and uh, he had gotten sick and she'd gotten a letter saying he, he'd gotten sick but he was recovering and uh, there was a, some kind of a social event a, a big uh, social event amongst her mother's side of the family and um, and Cynthia said, I, I better not go because Roger is sick. And her mother said, now, I know none of you liked Hyacinth, but I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed Elizabeth Gaskell because when she wrote, she intended for everybody at the end to like even the characters that were foolish because they all learned their lesson and they were all redeemable. And so I could see this, you know, you didn't hate her forever. Um, she had her faults, but you didn't hate her forever. And her mother said... Uh, why don't why can't you, why don't you think you can go because uh what are you going to say someone i know is sick so i can't go to the ball she said that would be considered an affectation of sentiment <laughs> so when i tell you not to put off life don't put off uh taking an art course or learning to sew um and when I say this, choose good courses and teachers that uh, inspire you rather than people that make grueling work out of everything. Um, that's the same thing with the homeschool material. If at any time the children uh, were becoming uh, clouded and their temperament wasn't good and I could see it wasn't giving them life, just put this stuff away and try something else. Uh, later on, maybe in years to come, they'd go back to it, but never push uh, any kind of curriculum or learning on it. This is just somebody else's um, opinion. This is just somebody else's influence. You know, they've written all this. You could actually write your own curriculum. Um, you don't realize that you can, but you can. Once you've been through all this, you understand what it is, but never um, push a uh, a curriculum on anybody to the point that they are frustrated and they are not enjoying it because I believe that learning should be a delight and you know that scripture I was reading to you in Hebrews it says in, you have to endure with joy how can you endure something with joy if uh, if the if the thing that you're studying is uh, dull to you or not not delightful now, what I want to do also is stress um, something here, because we're going to talk about people now, since I, did, since I did mention Hyacinth and Cynthia. And that is the people thing. It's so interesting, because not many people I know these days will fight with all their might, tooth and nail, to resist uh, their home breaking up, to resist divorce. Not many people I know, they, they just so easily succumb to it uh, and that came probably with uh, um, no fault divorce which just it was just it's just like the days of uh, Moses where someone could say well I want a divorce and it's done and we've seen that uh, so one person says they want a divorce they don't give anybody a chance to negotiate to work it out nothing it's done and uh, you don't even have to sign anything and and before you know you're divorced and you don't know how that happened but I have recently met some people who fought for it but back in the olden days if uh, a Christian woman uh, found out that her husband was trying to divorce her the weeping was terrible and she uh, drew on the help of Christians to pray and pray and work on you know to help to restore this they wouldn't let it get that far now no one uh, I, I say no one I'm just saying in general I have met a few women who have fought for their marriages to keep their homes intact keep their children and their family all under one roof they have fought 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 so if this is something you have done I congratulate you that is a hard job and they can really the enemy can really make you feel doubtful about your sanity once you start fighting for your family, and it's not just uh, your marriage, but your children, because when you start homeschooling your children, you start doing do-it-yourself stuff at home, 
uh, there's a barrage of people that will tell you you're absolutely insane. And um, I got told that a couple of times. In fact, one time I took a uh, took a course <laughs> and uh, found something that you could take uh, where I knew somebody in the church that uh, had access to this uh, kind of a little course you could take to find out if you were mentally sound. And, uh, and I took it, and then he gave me a um, statement or a little certificate that said I was mentally sound because I got so tired of listening to people outside of my home telling me that I was insane and then telling my children that I wasn't mentally sound because I was not putting them in public school. So I had this on my wall for a while, and um, I don't know where it is now, but, you know, I really ought to give myself another one, don't you think? And... Um, so now I want to talk a little bit about sewing and how you can get back into it if you want to, and that is just put it in your put it in your course. Uh, you've got the stack of books and things like that. So just cut a piece of your fabric and uh, put a little paper clip on it with a note. You know I'm going to cut this out today and start small. Don't don't give yourself huge complicated projects to do. Now my granddaughter and a lot of girls her age that are 13, 14, and 15 are not going the hard way like we did. They don't do darts. They don't do facings. They don't do, um, they don't even follow the uh, rule of the straight grain of fabric. If there's room there to put something, they'll put something and their, their garments are beautiful. And, uh, they have a, an eye for the effect and the color and, uh, what might take us a month to sew, they can do in a couple of hours because they just, uh, take an old t-shirt and they trace around it and cut it out and, cut it out on the fabric and uh, uh, I've been watching this and thinking how we used to before we went to school and were taught the proper way to sew we actually could do it you know but now it's all this hesitancy because we've made life hard for ourselves and uh, but I can remember tracing around things when I was nine years old and doing a double amount and uh, sewing it around with hand stitching and turning things inside out and really experimenting with it without uh and I noticed without patterns and without someone hovering over you telling you that wasn't the right way to do it. And I noticed we really had to restrain ourselves, her mother and I, watching her because we were watching her set it, put this sleeve in thinking, well, it'd be easier to put it in this way because that's how we do it, um, to, to be quiet and not stop her because uh, she was uh, inspired. And um, so anyway, get some fabric, make yourself a tablecloth or something nice um, just for fun. Or um, just get back into sewing, wrap something around you, cut it, put an elastic in it, and make yourself a skirt. And, um, but, of course, I have my favorite things that are hard to do, where I have things cut out and I never got them finished, which I hope that I can get to. Now, I don't, I'm trying to think if I've got, if I've covered everything. Oh, yes, I wanted to show you something that I, oh, I want to show you that I got in the mail. Uh, Miss Amy at uh, on the journey and she's on uh, my blog roll she sent out her newsletter and it's on the subject of honorable isn't that great now see I've told you she can take these and she can put them in plastic sleeves and put them in a binder and save these for the future these are extremely valuable and she does wonderful lettering and uh, drawing and she says um, honorable honorable um, I'm trying to think. Children choose it, don't refuse it. Tis a precious diadem. Highly prize it, don't despise it. You will need it when you're men. And so this is part of. Uh, and Amy, I, I don't know if you know, but um, it went off the went off the edge here, and I couldn't read it. You will need it when you're old, and something else. <laughs> um, so she has just taken a word like honorable and done artwork with it, and done a, a recipe with it. And uh, just just done wonders with it. And then she included uh, in my paper a crossword puzzle. You know what they say about crossword puzzles. They're not politically correct, and they're trying to ban them. So that's why some of us homeschoolers and, and newsletter writers and uh, commonplace newsletter people are are reviving them to sending them around. I even had my grandchildren try to sit down and make pro crossword puzzles for each other for us to do. And then I ordered something, uh, thanks to some of you and your sweet kindness of donations. I, uh, 
enjoyed a, a company online called the English Tea Store. Now they get, I believe they're out of California, and they get some of their products straight from England, and I just enjoy it so much, and they have the Yorkshire Gold Tea. And I learned also uh, from um, Tea Time Magazine had an article about why there's such a difference in flavor in the Yorkshire Gold and the Yorkshire Tea. The Yorkshire Tea is in the red box. I never buy it. But it, it, to me, it doesn't taste as good as Yorkshire Gold. Well, one of them, I don't know which one, was made for hard water, and the other was made for soft water. And uh, so the flavor, it will be affected by the kind of water you have, which I don't know what kind I have, but I know I prefer the gold, Yorkshire Gold. And But they had, uh, they had this little eight uh, set of little jams. Isn't this cute? And uh, they're all different. Uh, there's a uh, wild blueberry, and, and just enough for maybe one piece of toast or several crackers. And so they have uh, grape, blueberry, apricot, fig, raspberry, orange marmalade, cherry, strawberry, uh, blueberry, and grape. And what I'll do with these is when I can, uh, I'll take an empty tea box, like the Yorkshire Gold tea box when it's empty, and I'll put, uh, I want to take something to someone, I'll put it, one of these in there, and then I will insert maybe some Scottish shortbread uh, from the grocery store. People are really uh, getting sensitive about uh, food and making sure, wanting it to be, uh, everything to be sanitary and everything, so I prefer, you know, when I fill one of these boxes, I'll put stuff in it, and I'll do it for my, uh, my descendants, my grandchildren, too, is make them each a little box with these things in it, um, that they can, so they can enjoy their own tea party, and I might put some notes in it, or one of my little books, or one of the books uh, by that famous author. And um, so I want to also mention that I use this in my course, and this is in my stack, and it's I've got it written here on the marker, Wildflowers. And I talked to you about that yesterday, and it has a picture of a drawing of uh, people gathering wildflowers. And what I liked about some of these books that we that were reproduced in the 1980s was that it showed the mother with the daughter uh, or the father with the sons. In the in the boys' book was was produced first, and then a girls' book came along later. It says wildflowers and their preservation. So I've written that down. Not that I'm going to do it, but I'm going to read that chapter. It says how to cut wildflowers, how to send flowers by mail how to preserve flowers, and it has the illustrations, pressed flowers and leaves, leaves and ferns for decoration, Colors, color of flowers changed, um, natural wax flowers, how to fresh and cut flowers, crystallized flowers, perfume of flowers, um, the four-leaf clover, keeping bouquets fresh, I mean, it's just a very beautiful, very beautiful uh, reproduction of the 1800s. Uh, activities for girls, but I might not do it, but I want to read it, at least read it. That way my mind is not on what they're doing uh, out there to make the rest of us miserable. I just wonder how much of this we could do at home without them interfering with it, um, because I believe we can probably provide a lot for ourselves, um, maybe plant a few flower seeds, and um, maybe produce our own too. So ladies, I hope that uh, you'll endure anything that happens out there with joy because you need to focus back on your home. And uh, that, this, that this has been helpful. And remember the little drops of thankfulness as a substitute uh, when you feel that the... Because you know what? They're not going to let us go. And we, we used to hear about, like in the 1970s, I remember... We used to hear about how they're going to put us all in camps, you know, and it was just going to be terrible. But actually, they they actually did um, incarcerate us, didn't they? Locked you up in your own home. It was cheaper for them to lock you up in your own home, you see. It saved all the transporting and and all the, the food preparation, and, and you didn't have to hire anybody. You just lock them up in their own home. But uh, I believe we can come out better, stronger, um, and smarter and more talented and uh, more physically fit and uh, healthier and happier. And I believe that you can do this. And the way I, the reason I'm talking about this, I believe they're going to try it again. So you be prepared this time of, you know, in the winters in Alaska, in the 1950s, my mother 
when winter was coming on, she would order some things from one of those catalogs. And they have kits for children. Uh, and she made sure each one of us had a kit, like a knitting kit or some kind of a building kit for the boys. Uh, so that when the darkest, uh, dreariest days came on that were uh, most hard to endure, she'd get something out for us. So you get yourself something ready back and keep it back in a back room of these special things. And you can sense that people are getting a little bit melancholy, maybe a little depressed. Bring out some of these things or make your own, you know, um, and uh, learn. We can come out of this uh, probably less dependent on uh, the state's um, the state's businesses. And you can tell which businesses are owned by the state by how quickly they obey their masters. And I told you before that, uh, oh yeah, they're all open now. We're not wearing the uh, the MASK anymore. And oh, they're just so friendly. They want you back. They want your business back. And uh, so everybody's, you know, free and we're all shopping and we're all walking around, going out to eat and everything. But tomorrow, if their masters tell them to uh, bark at us and to order us about and to be mean. The same person that um, served you the day before that was so happy to see you was told to be friendly to you. Well, their eyes will have hardened and they turn into a, a strict authoritarian. They might be like 18 years old. You know, <laughs> To me, people look a lot younger than they used to look. My dentist looks like he's 16, you know. I was used to, uh, when I was growing up, every professional was older than you. <laughs> And now I'm older than all of them. But they'll turn on you in an instant the minute their their handlers tell them to. So you can't trust those people out there. Um, figure out ways to do things yourself. And uh, they said, uh, you know this uh, Gavin, um, was it Gavin McGrady that used to work for the Queen or Princess Diana? And he started his own catering business in Texas. He also cooked for Ronald Reagan and some of the other presidents. And he said uh, in one of his recent videos that cooking classes and cooking shows were so full up and people were cooking and they were uh, preparing food at home. It just delighted him. Well, look what we can do. In fact, I think it even tastes better than restaurant food. And then all you have to work on that after that is the atmosphere and the pleasant surroundings. So ladies, I hope you got a little bit out of this while you work. Now, I don't rehearse anything and I don't edit anything. It takes so much time. So um, just remember that any of the mistakes I made is just the rantings of an old woman. Just ignore it and try to do the best you can today. And not, you, could you give yourself some time off from uh, the media? Just, uh, just let yourself uh, off of it and start looking around. If you have to use the web, look around for things that you can do or make. Um, I've got my favorite stuff that I like to look at um, that uh, enriches me. So ladies, I hope to see you next time. Thank you so much for your comments and thank you for, uh, for coming here today and spending a little time with me. And I hope you got a lot done. So I'll see you next time. Bye.